Okay, so we talk about uh, interstitial diffusion. We talked about uh, self diffusion, which is tracer, radioactive tracer. We talked about uh, uh, we just talked about vacancy diffusion. Okay, and now we are going to talk about uh, diffusion in a alloy, different element because self diffusion we are dealing with a pure system, right? Radio A, A star, they are still A element, they are pure, no concentration gradient. We, we said, okay, diffusion, quite often that's concentration diff gradient. Now, finally, we are going to get into the system binary that has some concentration gradient, okay? For substitution, of course, the interstitial that would have concentration gradient. And the so called the Kirk and Dow effect, slash, dark darken equations some of you probably never heard of this some of you probably learn for you it will be second or third time learning it but i believe some of you probably never heard of this really okay so what is kirk and Dow effect it's a scientist uh, probably 70 or 80 years ago they were doing this they put uh, this purple for pure copper yellow color for so-called uh, brass what is brass this here i'll give it here 70 percent copper 30 percent zinc single phase solid solution alloy which means they are sitting in a single phase region okay they put this piece that color is yellow brass your typical key like it's not pure copper stuff like these are not pure copper they are key it's typically brass the lock a lot of the locks are made of brass because they offer slightly better harness and also corrosion resistance compared with pure copper okay and the pure copper quite often if you get ever get your hand onto pure copper high purity copper fresh right from the electrolytic bars it looks like actually pinkish color it's not a typical brass color it's what do you see is darker that's oxi oxidized the fresh fresh copper is pinkish color really pink color so they put plate electroplating copper pure copper onto a piece of so-called brass but before they plate they wrap the so-called brass with so-called uh, molybdenum wire moly wires okay and they use this so-called moly wire as the so-called uh, marker mm -hmm. and then they do this anew in an inert atmosphere at what temperature 785 pretty high temperature not yet melting but uh, it's pretty high temperature and the uh, in inert atmosphere or vacuum so that you avoid oxidation okay the moly wires are marker they're not soluble and the copper and the zinc if you know metals a little bit copper and the zinc they are melting point of course are different but their atom size are actually pretty similar which means if their atom size are similar they would form what types of solution interstitial or substitutional right the similar size it's difficult for anyone to go into the other uh, interstitial sites okay and then they heat and they observe what is going to happen what are the observations first one they observe the molybdenum wires move towards read inside what is inside means the wires goes which way towards more inside okay that's first observation and okay if they do this for a different time they track how far that molybdenum wire moves they find the displacement the motion of that thing follows the square root of t which means if they're going to plot the displacement versus square root of t not not t not time but square root of t they get a nice straight line they would get a nice straight line here 
Okay? That's the observation, one observation. The other observation is this displacement, this micron. Micron, well, a hundred micron you can almost see with your naked eye, right? A hundred micron you can see with your naked eye, definitely with the optical microscope. Make sense? Okay, the, this displacement is larger than this movement, it's larger than the change due to the atom size difference. Because the concentration will change, and the, the copper and the zinc, they have slightly different atom size. If we think atoms are hard spheres, if the spheres are got to be larger, then everything would move a little bit. Make sense? But they found, okay, the displacement is much larger than the change due to the atom size change. Okay? Not only that, they also observed this interface, the interface between what? Between brass, which is inside yellow colored, and copper, pure copper, this outside uh, pink colored moves together with the molding wire. They found it, okay, it seems to move together with the molybdenum wire. So these are their observations. Okay, what do these observations mean? What do they imply? The first thing would be naturally, and, sh and sh what we learn, the typically if we assume uh, downhill diffusion going from high concentration to low concentration, which way would uh, copper go? Which side has higher copper concentration? Of course the pure copper, copper side has higher copper concentration and the brass has a lower copper concentration, so naturally copper would go from high concentration to low concentration, and on the other hand, zinc inside is higher concentration goes out. Right? So of course that's the diffusion. But because of this motion of the so-called marker, because of the motion of this interface, it means, hmm, believe it or not, we would have this. J means J means what? Flux. J, J, J means flux. J zinc greater than JCU. The flux of zinc going from inside towards outside seems to be larger than the flux of copper going from outside to inside with respect to what? To that interface, to that moly marked interface. Make sense? Because what I said is this interface is going to move inside. What that, that means is that there will be more zinc coming out than the amount of copper going in with respect to that moving interface or the moly marker. Okay, that's one implication. If they are exactly the same, probably it will stay, the marker will stay as they are. Make sense? One implication. And the other one is the diffusion is actually going through the so-called vacancy mechanism, not through the uh, so-called uh, interstitial mechanism. Okay? So let me pause here for a second.